can you easily compare values in Excel based on a condition? The answer is the IF function, one of the most popular and useful functions in Excel. I'm Don Bjork, the Software Pro. I'm also a Microsoft Certified Trainer and Certified Excel Expert. In this training, we'll look at the Excel IF function, which tests whether a condition is true or false, and then performs an action such as a calculation or data entry. The IF function is so much easier than manually sorting and filtering data to find specific values or entries. In the examples, we'll also explore how can we use this function alone, how do we know when we need more than one IF, and how we can combine it with other logical functions such as AND, OR, the OR function. Let's look at the structure or syntax of the IF function. Basically, it's a three-part function where we can have two results. So first, we have a logical test. This is what is being analyzed, evaluated, or tested. Then, we'll have our comparison, basically what the true or the false part of this function. So what happens if that first part of the test is true? Or the third argument of the function is, what happens if the first part of the test is false? Now the cell or entry that's being evaluated might be a formula, a value, or text. And the displayed result can also be a formula, value, or text. For example, if an expense amount is more than 5% over the budgeted amount, then display the word over, otherwise show OK. Next, we'll explore some examples of the IF function. In this worksheet, we have a variety of different values that we want to be able to use in our calculations in our IF function. And this is a good best practice whenever you have some comparison values, and that is to present them very transparently within the worksheet and not to build them into the formula. And so here you'll see that we will use this key information. If we build values into the formulas, then it can be more challenging to try to locate them should we want to change the values, and it's more difficult to do projections. So here we're sharing then with anyone who might have access to this worksheet exactly how we're making our decisions. In this case then, for our first IF function, we'll use INSERT function. Now we could type it out directly, but if this is a brand new function for you, it, it might be easier to see the arguments. We can find insert function under the formulas tab of the ribbon or just to the left of the formula bar. Next, locate the if function. If it's not displayed under the category most recently used, you can also find it alphabetically under all. From here, choose OK, and we'll see those three arguments. And in this case, what we want to test is where the sales fall in place. That is, whether or not this particular person will actually receive a commission. And so we're evaluating how this compares to a goal that's set. Let's explore that. From here, the test is if the sales, in this case the sales that is just to the left for that salesperson, is greater than or equal to our sales goal, our low sales goal. To make this an easy calculation to copy down, we want to make this an absolute reference. We want to fix it so that the formula always goes to the cell H2. To do that, we hit the F4 function key to make this an absolute reference. So this says always go to cell H2. That's what the dollar signs are telling you. If that is true, then the next part is to do the calculation for the commission. So for this one, we then reference once again the sales figure and then multiply that by the commission. Right now that's 2%. And this is one of the reasons why we don't want to type in the value because the sales goal could change, the commission could change, and then we can only need to change it in one place. Once again, we'll make this an absolute reference by hitting the F4 function key. You could also type in the dollar signs in front of the column and the row reference here. And then finally, what happens if that test is not true? If the sales is less than the sales goal, in this case 8,500. And here we'll type in 
just what we want to see displayed here. And a, we'll talk a little bit more about putting in text here in just a moment. For now, simply OK. And we see this is NA because this value is less than that sales goal. Let's copy that down. A real quick way to do that is go to the fill handle and double click. It copies down to match and we can see that we have some other results then. So anyone who has sales that are greater than or equal to 8,500 at this point then would receive this commission amount. In building this function, we use cell references or the absolute references instead of typing in those numbers. Another option for us could be to create range names. Now, I find this to be a much more practical application than having to make everything an absolute reference. So range names becomes a time saver. It also becomes easier for other people that may be working with the worksheet because you're identifying these values a little bit more easily. In this training, we won't be digging in or exploring a lot about range names, but let me just give you a really quickie lesson on this one. Here's the value, here's the cell, and I want to give this a label or a name, so as the name implies. Now a quick easy way for us to do this is to go to something called the name box. And here we'll find this to the left of our formula bar. So this particular cell has not yet been given a name. It has the cell reference certainly. And I'll type in here, sales goal low. Notice a couple things about this. No spaces, a range name can have letters, numbers, or the underscore character, but it must begin with a letter or the underscore character. No spaces allowed. And I've used title case here to make this easier to actually identify the purpose. And I'll hit enter. Next, I'll repeat that same process for the other sales goal. By default, these range names would be unique within this workbook. And so we wouldn't be able to have any other range names with the same name. Now there's a way to change the scope and if you want to explore what range names are already in your workbook or you want to be able to manage them, you will find this under the formulas tab under the name manager. So as I mentioned, this is a very quick exploration of this idea but wanted to give you yet another solution for how you might reference these key values. Let's go back and look at what we created with the if function, and then we'll start building and layering onto this. This could have been typed in manually as well. And you'll see then that three-part setup. It's also nice that Excel will give us the color coding to really be able to see very easily exactly what that reference is. What I want you to see here is, in that last portion here where we said NA, because it was the insert function, we did not have to type in the quotes. But if you are typing out the function directly, you need to make sure you put in the quotations. What that says is this is the character string. And that is, this is something that is not a function, not a range name. It is simply text that you want to see displayed. And so whether it's yes, no, okay, NA, it needs to be shown in quotations. And so keep that in mind as you have different responses for that. Also, as part of this, we'll see that there's a comma that separates each one of these arguments. It's fine if you're typing this out manually if you want to have a space there, but it's not something that you need to do. Let's build on this. One of the things that happens is not every evaluation has only one condition where it's limited to two different actions. Sometimes we might have multiple possibilities or different levels that we want to compare. And this calls in for us to have nested or multiple if functions. We can also nest other functions within the if function as needed to create our logical conditions. That is, we might apply a condition to the results of a sum or an average function. For this next one, we'll have some function fun. And that is, we'll create a function where we are, first of all, working with the AND function, and then also looking at nesting. What we're evaluating is, first, have they completed training, and second, has the sales exceeded this high sales goal, which at this point is 15,000. And we'll use then 
the AND function to make that happen. So first we start with equal if. It can be in lowercase. Excel will make that uppercase. Then type in AND. That is then another function that we are nesting here. And open parentheses. So this is part of our testing, the first part of this if function. And notice here that we have then the arguments are to put in our multiple criteria, what it is we're comparing. We can have two, three, or, or more criteria for this. Next, we want to say training completed. So this cell here, this is not an absolute reference because it varies with each person. And so we do want this to move down. If that is equal to, here we'll type in yes. That is the first criteria. Comma. The next one is that the total sales is greater than our high goal, which is 15,000. Once again, we don't want to type in that value because perhaps we're going to be working with some projections. Because this has a range name, which we did earlier, you can see how this is easier to understand the purpose or the intention of that. But if we didn't have that, then we would make this an absolute reference so that we could refer to it as we copy this formula down. So those are the two conditions. We could add more, but both of them have to be met for the next part of this function. So close parentheses for the AND function. And that's an important thing as well. So now we are moving to the next argument of the IF function. And that is what happens if all of these conditions are true. If that is true, what we want to say in quotes here is yes, meaning that yes, they are part of the winner's circle. Whatever phrase or words you want there, it doesn't have to be just one word, or it could be a value that you put in. So it's just what do you want to have happen when all of these conditions are true, comma. What happens when they are not all true? If only one of those conditions is true, for instance, then we would still be looking at the false side of this. And so in this case, then, what we're going to do is put in, quote, quote. This means I want to leave it blank. So you don't have to put in a space, have anything else there. Simply want to leave it blank. We'll do another close paren. So when you're testing, if you're trying to troubleshoot a function, then a couple things to look for is, do you have an open close quote when you are using text? Do you have the same number of open parentheses as you do the close parentheses? Fortunately, we see the color coding with Excel. That makes it a bit easier to test these things out. Let's go ahead and enter that in. Once again, copy it down. So right now we have an interesting thing with our results. We don't see any yeses. And that is absolutely correct. Because for instance, someone here who has a higher level of sales, has not completed the training. What happens if that changes to a yes? Now we see that he is part of the winner's circle. Or what if we change that higher sales goal? Perhaps this becomes instead of 15,000, perhaps this becomes 12,000. Now notice how this will change than our results. And that is the power of working with the if function because automatically it will do the analysis for you. You don't have to be sorting, filtering, and manually putting in these entries. And that's also the power of making sure that these values are something that can be easily changed and that you don't have to be editing all those formulas. So now this is giving us some information that we could sort and filter later. That is, if we wanted to do something specifically with only the people that are part of that winner's circle. And there's even more. You ready for some more function fun? I know it. I'm kind of nerdy that way. The if function not only can have and or or, we'll look at how to do the or function here in just a moment, but we can also nest other if functions within it. So let's look at this for ranking. In this case, we want to have different conditions depending upon where those sales landed. And in this case, then I'll start with an if and an and. 
And the first part of this is that the sales are greater than or equal to our low goal at 8,500 and the sales here again, F8, are less than our high goal. That is that they fall in that range. If that is true, and now we're done with those conditions, but we could actually put in others depending upon what we're evaluating. So that's our test. Make sure to close paren for that AND function, comma. So what happens if it's true? Well, in that case, we want to see the word good. We could actually reference the value that we see in our layout of our various values. What happens when this is not true? Well, we're going to get to that in just a moment. But what we want to do next is another if function. And this is then if, so we don't put in equals, we only have that at the very beginning, open parentheses, then if the sales, here again, F8, is greater than or equal to that high value, then what we would do with that, then is we're going to have a comma and say exceptional. Now at this point, it can be helpful to follow along here to see that by putting in that comma now, we're actually now at that place of what happens if it's false. So we've actually addressed all the true side of this function. What happens if either one of those is false? And in this case, we'll put in the low goal. Remember the open and close quotes on that. We have a close parentheses here, and we need to put in one more. That is for the entirety of the if function. So the, the first one there was for the second if function. <laughs> and then we have the last one there. So as I mentioned before, it's good sometimes just to simply count off and see that you have the balance on those. Excel will try to help you, but sometimes um, it's unable to figure out exactly how to resolve these kinds of errors. And we can see then for this first one that in fact it was below goal. Let's copy that down. And you can see the additional results here. And so this becomes another option. As I mentioned then, if you wanted to maybe be even more consistent and make this easier, instead of typing in the words there, we could have referenced these values here, good and exceptional. And so that would have been another way for us to do that. If you wanted to actually have these be formatted depending upon the results or the responses, perhaps below goal has a red background and exceptional has a bright green background. Those are things that can actually happen within conditional formatting. So although we won't explore it in this training, know that this is once again something that can be done automatically and set up in Excel. It is not something you have to do manually. So if you want to have that visual information pop out a little bit more, that can be done through conditional formatting. In this example then, we had multiple ifs and we also nested in an AND function. At some point, the IF function can start to break down, if you want to think of it that way. That is, it, the logic can start to get pretty messy. So even though Excel supports up to 64 levels of nesting, you would at some point reach a logical limit in terms of how easily you could express these. That is, there might be a better solution for you if you have a lot of different levels or rankings to deal with where this might make more sense to have it be a, a V lookup or another type of lookup to be able to handle all of these different levels. But at this point then, this is still pretty clear logic and something that we can easily solve through the if function. Let's look at one more example, and this is using the OR function. 
So for this one, what we want to evaluate is whether or not the individual, the salesperson, will receive a year-end bonus. So this will be determined on a couple things, and that is the answer that we have here in the commission column. That is, they won't get a bonus if they didn't earn a commission. And we also want to encourage and, and have training be something that's important. So, so we're evaluating that is if the commission is NA or training is no, either one of those, then in that case, they won't get a bonus. Otherwise, we'll do a calculation to make that happen. Here's how this looks. It's equal if, open parentheses, the logical test then is going to be using the or function. And here we'll say that this commission, what's in column G, if that is equal to NA, or if training completed, which is J8, I'll type that in to make that a little easier as a reference, is equal to no. If either of those is true, doesn't have to be both. If either of those is true, then what happens? Well, we will say no bonus. Now, if they have received a commission and they've completed training, then they get a little extra money. And in this case, we'll take the sales, which is in column F, multiply that by the year end bonus. And because this doesn't have a range name, hit the F4 function key to make that an absolute reference to put the dollar sign H dollar sign phi and we'll close this function. Go ahead and hit enter and let's see what happens here again. And for this one then, for instance, we can see they did not receive a commission and they did not complete training. Now for this one, they did receive a commission, but they did not complete training. So they got penalized in a couple different ways. They're not part of the winner circle and they did not receive the year-end bonus. Now you've seen multiple ways to save time and effort by analyzing data in Excel with the if function. For more tips on being productive with Excel, head to thesoftwarepro.com slash Excel. If this training was helpful, please like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel. This is Don Bjork, the Software Pro. Thanks for watching.